Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. And welcome to another episode of Tea Time with Lovely Tea Unfiltered. So I want to come on here and talk about a topic that people have asked me to talk about for a while now, but I kind of shied away from it because of all the YouTube censorship. So if you guys do not know, there's a thing called Drag Queen Story Hour, and it's spreading around public libraries all around the country. They also do it here in my city of Minneapolis. It's getting pretty popular as well. So there's been a lot of controversy concerning this whole practice, okay? So in today's episode, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about the conspiracy. Is there a conspiracy to basically, you know what I mean, sexualize our children at earlier ages while they're learning and coming into themselves? So that's what we're going to talk about today. <music> Yes, you guys, it's a small conspiracy hour, okay? Instead of drag queen hour, it's conspiracy hour. So, you know, like I learned a long time ago as a wee lass that, you know, the teachers of the child are the parents. The parents are the first teachers of the child. And with what you choose to teach your children, you can either steer them in a good way or a bad way, okay? So I feel like in this day and age, you have a lot of parents that are too busy trying to be cool, trying to look woke trying to look hip. They don't want to be seen as, oh, homophobic or transphobic or, you know, any of those words that people like to throw around. But I'm looking at all this because I'm a parent. You know, I have a 19-year-old son and I have a 14-year-old son. And I'm looking at all the stuff that's going on. And I'm just like, where's just the common sense of being a parent? Like, why is it that as a parent, you can't just tell your child no? And especially when it comes to things that are very sexual, that their brains may not be able to process yet. So what's going down is this, right? So there's all this stuff about Drag Queen Story Hour. It originated in San Francisco. And it's now spread across, you know, I don't know if it's all 50 states, but it's spread across a lot of states, even here in my own city. Um, I live in the Twin Cities and there was a big controversy that went down in October. There was a drag queen who goes by the name Sasha Soda. And during his story hour, he sat there with his legs spread out. Um, he had on like some nylon stockings, but you could clearly see his crotch. So this caused a lot of controversy. Like some of these drag queens are doing the most. You know, why is he sitting, you know, damn near spread eagle in front of children? Then you have some drag queens that are rolling around on the ground. They got kids rolling on them. And it's just been a bit much. So a lot of people are starting to give the whole drag queen story hour situation the side eye. I want to go ahead and play you guys this small clip of this man. Um, he's from the Twin Cities and he's kind of talking about the whole situation. So you guys get a broader picture of the drama that's attached to this whole drag queen story hour. Y'all go ahead and listen to this real quick. Drag queen story hour, which started as a small fringe phenomenon in San Francisco in 2015, is now sweeping the land. This is where parents bring their young children to a public library to be read to by a drag queen. The public libraries, of course, are happily welcoming these events. In Minnesota's Hennepin County library system, these drag queen story hours now occur regularly. On October 17th, one such story hour was occurring in the Ridgedale Public Library in Minnetonka. The drag queen, who called herself Sasha Soda, walked in with high heels, a pink skirt, and a shirt that exposed his midsection. According to an attendee, the drag queen strode suggestively past the children, sitting down in a chair before several preschool age girls with his legs spread wide, exposing his nylon covered crotch in front of the children sitting at eye level. First off, why the double standard? In any other setting, if an adult exposed their crotch to children, they'd be in jail. Our Paul Politicians should get Drag Queen Story Hour out of the libraries. If that means cutting the library's funding, then so be it. It isn't just Sasha Soda who's problematic. A brief search of various Drag Queen Storytime performers reveals a consistent trend of both highly sexualized and ghoulish outfits. One performer, pictured, has about five white horns with red tips on his head. And don't for one second think that Drag Queen Story Hour will stop here. If left unintended to, Drag Queen Storytime will soon be in the public schools. It's also a mistake to think that this this issue is confined to drag queen story time and not see the big picture. Across the country, child drag queens are a growing phenomenon. Desmond is Amazing is an 11 year old boy who has received glowing media attention despite clear and convincing evidence that his parents are financially profiting from his exploitation. How on earth does an 11 year old decide to be a drag queen without heavy adult manipulation? These child drag queens do suggestive shows in front of adult men in bars as the men sip their drinks and watch. Where is child protection services? I write you guys. 
guys. So you guys just heard that gentleman's talking point. So this entire situation with this whole drag queen story hour, I feel like this is a conspiracy to basically get these children more comfortable with this situation so that way we can raise more Desmond Amazing. And I've seen him on social media. I've seen news stories about him, and I'm not feeling that at all. At 11 years old, it's one thing if he wants to play around in makeup, that's their business. But the fact that he's being toted around to adult bars in front of grown men and he's doing sexually suggestive dances and twerking and, you know, just be behaving very very hypersexual and the media is praising this it makes me give the situation the side eye if this was an 11 year old girl who was being told it around bars in front of grown men even in front of grown women okay and she's dancing suggestively she's wearing really suggestive clothing and we all know with drag queen shows that's what they like to perpetuate is that you know that sexuality and things like that um if this was a little young girl that's being told it around from city to city behaving in this manner rolling around on the ground twerking taking pictures with you know naked men with frontal shots um they would shut this down they would look at this as, you know, this girl, this is pedophilia. This is not okay. Um, there, People would be outraged. But because it's a little boy, it's like people are scared to call it what it is because, God forbid, they say that you're, you know, transphobic or homophobic or against the LGBT. And that's not the case. I'm against anybody sexualizing a child, regardless of what their gender is, regardless of what their sexual orientation may be. He needs to be a child. He needs to be an 11-year-old boy trying to figure out and live his best life. He does not need to be doing drag queen shows at the age of 11, okay? So I'm definitely not feeling that. And I feel like a lot of these drag queen story hours, um, I'm definitely seeing mixed reviews. You know, some people think that they're cool. Other people feel like, you know what, this is just a bit too much. Why do we have drag queens reading to children? Why not just get regular volunteers to come out and read to the babies? Um, there's also been a guy who had um, a long criminal record of molesting children um, he was a pedophile and he ended up being one of the drag queen readers and that happened in another state um, a lot of times they're just doing the most and even some of the material that they're reading to the children is not something that should be read to four and five and six year old children it's way above their comprehension you know so this entire situation is really disturbing but now on top of this there is a viral story. This is why I'm doing this podcast is because this drag queen has gone viral for basically dragging, okay, no pun intended, drag queen story hour. So this drag queen, his name is Kitty Demure. And basically Kitty is speaking out about the sexualization of children and calling out these fake woke parents and saying that at the end of the day, drag queens and drag queen shows should be meant for adults. They are not meant for children. So a lot of people are praising her for coming out and being honest but of course you have some people saying oh she's shaming the community she shouldn't have said anything that's not okay so she's receiving backlash from some in the in the drag queen and lgbt community while other people are also praising her so i want you guys to go ahead and listen to what kitty demure had to say you would want that to influence what what in the hell has a drag queen ever done to make you have so much respect for them and admire them so much other than put on makeup and, and jump on the floor and writhe around and do sexual things on stage. I have absolutely no idea why you would want that to influence your child. Would you want a stripper or a porn star to influence your child? It, it makes no sense at all. A drag queen performs in a nightclub for adults. There is a lot of filth that goes on, a lot of sexual stuff that goes on. And backstage, there's a lot of nudity, sex, and drugs. Okay? So I don't think that this is a, a, an avenue you would want your child to explore. They could explore dressing up at home like we all did, like all gay boys did. We all dressed at home and we had a great time. We had a great time with our girlfriends putting on makeup, trying on clothes, things like that. But to actually get them involved in drag is extremely, extremely irresponsible on your part. And I understand you might want to look like you're with it, that you're cool, that you're woke, that you're not a Nazi, that you're not a homophobe, whatever, whatever it may be. But you can raise your child to be just a normal, regular, everyday child without including them in gay, sexual, 
things. And honestly, you're not doing the gay community any favors. In fact, you're hurting us, okay? We have already had a reputation of being pedophiles and being perverts and deviants. We don't need you to bring your children around. So you keep your kids at home or take them to Disneyland or take them to Chuck E. Cheese. But if you need your child to be entertained by a big human in a costume or in makeup, take them to the circus or something. When they turn 18, then why don't you take them to the clubs on their 18th birthday? Because it's an adult thing, okay? So don't ruin your child's life and don't ruin us because that's what you're doing. All right, so you guys just heard from Kitty Demure. She is not here for the bullshit, okay? She was like, I'm tired of this and today I got time, cuz. 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 All right, so she wasn't playing with people today, okay? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.